All right, well, welcome everyone. I am JJ. Let's tackle an example problem. So we are using integration to determine the area or the centroid of this shape here. Um, on the bottom, our equation for the bottom here is given as y equals x cubed. Um, and then we have our steps written out, listed out that we're going to go through to actually tackle this. And these steps should work for any centroid by integration type problem for us. Um, so the first thing we need is what's an equation for the top of our shape? What's an equation for the bottom of our shape? y top and y bottom. So our y top, y top. We can say, well, if we look at this, we just have a horizontal line on the top. That means we're constant here. If we end up at 1, 1, we're constant at 1 the entire time. So y top is just equal to 1. And y bottom, we're given is just x cubed. So we'll write it out, but y bottom equals x cubed. And we can come in and work with this. That was step A. From there, we're supposed to come in and draw in our differential element on this. So we want some rectangle that just covers up our graph. Not always starting at the x-axis. If we put that in from the x, we get all this negative area that we have to account for, though. Um, we're going to come in and say, well, let's make our shape just go um, in our positive directions here. I'm only on the shape. So if I draw a box like this, this is going to be my differential element coming from the top of that shape and really just covering up only the shape. So we get infinitely small. We wouldn't have this little bit of negative space in here over there. But we could put in an infinite number of these and add these all up. Um, the middle of this is always going to get us our centroid of that point. Uh, if we measure to there, Going down to the x-axis, that's going to be our y bar, the centroid location of just this differential element, y bar EL. Um, it's always halfway between the top and the bottom of that point, and we'll talk through that in a bit. Going in the x direction in here, so from that point over to our y axis, well that's going to get us that's an x distance, so we'll call this an x bar. And it goes to the centroid of our element, so x bar EL is what we'll name that. Um, I'll have to come in and work with those. The width of this, if we are infinitely small in the x direction, um, from a calculus standpoint, let's call that a dx, a differential distance in our x direction. We can come in and work with this. So we're trying to figure out what is our area of this. To find the area of our differential element using dA, the area of this rectangle, is always going to be the equation of the top minus the equation of the bottom times the width. That's going to be our base dx times our height, y top minus y bottom. Um, so we can come in and find dA. dA should be our differential area is y top 1 minus y bottom minus x cubed times dx. This is height times base dx. Um, and we can work with that. We're then going to come in and say, let's figure out equations for these two things. For x bar el, because of how we set this up in here, um, it's always going to get that our distance here is just x for us. So x bar el equals x. y bar el should get us halfway between the top and the bottom of this to get something that's halfway between two other points. Really, we're just taking the average of that. So if I do the average of the top and the bottom, that would be our y bar EL is our y top, 1, plus our y bottom, plus x cubed, divided by 3. Sorry, not divided by 3. Divided by 2. I was looking at the cube there. Divided by 2 um, is going to get me there. Um, so that's the next point that I need to use. If I have these two things, I can come in and start trying to set up my three integrals I need. So start with our area. Area of the entire shape here should be our integral of dA. If we look at dA, I have a dx in here. That dx tells me I'm moving this differential strip in the x direction, putting in an infinite number of them. So I'm going to integrate from my smallest possible x value. That would be here at 0 to my largest possible x value. We go out to 1, 1 here. So the integral from 0 to 1 of dA. 1 minus x cubed 
dx, um, which I can come in and find that. This is really going to get me um, x minus x minus x to the fourth over 4, and I'd evaluate that from 0 to 1. Or my dA, dA is 0 0.75 inches squared. And that's my first integral I need. Um, from there, let's go on and get QY. QY should be equal to, this just becomes the numerator in my centroid formulas. But QY is my integral of um, X bar EL DA. DA still is going to have that DX in here. So we're integrating from our smallest to largest possible X values, 0 to 1 of x bar el, we know that's x, times dA, times 1 minus x cubed, dx. Or setting this one up, we're going to get that this is the same thing as x minus x to the fourth dx. Evaluating that, we would get um, x squared over 2 minus x to the fifth over 5, and we'd evaluate that from 0 to 1. Or my QY here, QY is going to work out to be 3 tenths of a cubic inch or 0.3 inches cubed. Um, and I just have one last integral that I need to come in and set up to be able to solve this all the way out. Uh, my QX will be my very last one. QX. I know the equation for this is always y bar el times dA. So qx should be our y bar el. Um, this is my um, integral. If I have dA, I'm still going to get dx. So from 0 to 1 of y bar el, 1 plus x cubed over 2 times dA times 1 minus x cubed times 1 minus x cubed. Um, dx. Which again, we can expand that and make that feel like an easier integral. Um, we should end up getting, if I pull that 2 out, my qx is my integral, or 1 half my integral, from 0 to 1 of um, 1 plus, or x cubed plus 1. Um, this is really going to simplify down to 1 minus x to the sixth when we actually go through and expand these two things, which is a pretty doable equation for us to integrate in here. Um, this will get us, evaluating that, we have x over 2 minus x to the seventh divided by, um, where am I looking at my notes? Divided by 14, pulling that 1 half back in. But, and we're going to evaluate that one from 0 to 1, from 0 to 1. Or my QX value works out to get us 3 sevenths of a cubic inch. Um, with our area known, QX known, QY known, I can find my centroids. Um, X bar should be every time. X bar is QY over A. I know QY is 0 0.3, and I know my area is 0 0.75. Um, I'd have cubic inches divided by square inches. That gets me a distance coming out. And my value here works out to be 2 fifths, or my X bar is 0 0.4 inches, which would be my first answer. Um, similarly, I can come in and get my Y bar. Y bar, by definition, is QX over A. QX is 3 sevenths of a cubic inch divided by our area, 0.75 or 3 fourths, 0 0.75 square inches. The squares would cancel the 3. We'd be left with inches. Our Y bar here is going to get us to 4 sevenths of an inch. Or we could write it I N. Um, same thing. Four sevenths of an inch, which would be our final answer for our problem. Again, doing centroids by integration is totally doable. 
We'll come back and do a whole bunch of videos in addition to these where we say, hey, a lot of times rather than integrating this, it's gonna be easier to break things up into easy to work with shapes. Um, so stick around, make sure to check those videos out. Um, those are the upcoming, really what we end up doing a lot more than integrating things. But hopefully this is a useful video for you. If it was, hit those like and subscribe buttons. Stick around, watch more videos. Let's get you an A with JJ.